next speaker is going to be Doug Pelek from the uh, Home Research. Uh, my name is Anthony, Boothfulness in uh, User Generated Content. This is a uh, joint work with uh, Elad Yomtov, who is a commissar, and uh, Lord Mark, which is like me, is at uh, the uh, Yao Lab in Institute uh, of Okay, just uh, to give you a hint, this is good. This is not a high level talk, this is a 30,000 foot view. Um, it is rather a more down to earth talk where we go and actually uh, mine a particular data source and you show um, how can you extract data from it. It is in general unstructured, but we uh, manage to find structure in it and then try and um, make some meaning from the stuff we find. So, custom use that. Okay, we're going to talk about UGC, which stands for user-generated content. Generally, these are, these are user comments or other contributed content like photos, uh, blog entries, and discussions. And in particular, truthfulness, which is something which uh, is not well defined. We have a good definition in the papers that we publish, but in general, it tells you um, whether you see the, the uh, uh, correct information, whether the uh, uh, contributor, the author, um, intentionally lied to you. We'll show how to uh, test UGC and several particular examples and see if it is really something you could trust. If you have a sensor in, on, a, on a manufacturing floor, then you uh, generally test that information. But when a user says, this product uh, is good, or I hate this other uh, person or other review, um, do they have some uh, incentive to lie, or can you uh, generally trust what they're saying? And uh, in particular, we're going to focus on insights in the areas of uh, social sciences and public health. I'll uh, show you the examples uh, in a minute. Okay, the data source we have uh, under study here is called Yahoo Answers. This is a website where people ask questions, just random people on the internet would post. Um, whatever interested them. Here we have examples of questions about um, school, um, psychology or behavior, uh, pets, homework help. You will see people asking about fixing their cars, decorating their home, relations, relationships, anything and everything. And once they post the uh, question, it's public on the web, and they get answers from uh, other people on the internet. So other users will type answers. And there's no uh, exchange of money. So the uh, answerers would uh, participate mainly for the uh, social experience. This uh, site has existed for uh, seven years now, seven or eight, and um, it's become very popular. It amassed over uh, 300 million questions and over a billion answers. In, uh, in particular interest is the uh, taxonomy of the site, which are the categories into which questions are, are classified. So once an asker posts a question, um, they ask, they're asked to uh, put it in one of the uh, predefined categories. There are about 1,700 uh, different categories at a uh, hierarchy, which has a maximum depth of uh, four, and usually three. So you see the examples here, uh, education, psychology, dogs, and so on. And this Capital structure gives us um, an easy way to define what a question is talking about without having to go into uh, NLP and actually reading the text. And I'm going to show you how that helps us in this project. Another important aspect is uh, anonymity. So you have, uh, you log in, there's a new user ID, or uh, actually a nickname that shows next to the question and answers. But you can make up anything you want. It's not tied to your Yahoo ID or Facebook ID or whatever you use to log in. You can easily disconnect it from your um, Yahoo webmail address. So people um, who know you don't necessarily know that you posted this particular question. And again, we're going to show how that uh, affects the uh, kinds of information you can extract. OK, so how do we mine this uh, data source? Here's one example. This question, am I fat, uh, is actually quite popular in the uh, diet and fitness category. There are tens of uh, thousands of examples of uh, this question in, in um, various uh, rephrases. 
And people sometimes would post their uh, photo and ask for other people's opinion on, on the uh, body measurements or body image, but would uh, also typically post um, the measurements. Here we see the height, the weight, the gender, and the age. And this could be matched um, automatically and uh, be aggregated. And once you have uh, tabulated the data, you can try and uh, apply uh, whatever data mining algorithm you have. Here we are interested in, um, is that information correct? Okay, when they uh, give these details, do we, do we think they are giving the uh, are exact measurements? Gender, for example, can be tested against whatever they supply to uh, Yahoo when they signed up. And that turns out to be extremely correct. So in 96% of uh, cases, it's the same gender as they uh, registered um, on sign up to Yahoo. Okay, they could be lying. They could be lying in both cases, right? But with a 96% accuracy, you assume that uh, most information is correct. So they're consistent. Yeah, if they're lying, they're, con they're consistent. <laughs> um, next, the uh, weight. We have ground truth about the weight. Uh, from the CDC, basically the U.S. Uh, uh, Department of Health, which um, um, carries uh, uh, surveys and they have uh, 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 medical personnel go and uh, measure people of different ages and report the um, um, data publicly. And here's the match for the CDC data. Okay, this is the table for uh, height, the chart for height. We have four lines here, two for males, two for females, two for um, CDC data and two for uh, answer, Yahoo Answers data. There's an extremely good match. Okay. We see that um, there's an excellent match. Also on the weight, so people who ask, am I fat, are usually uh, not overweight. But uh, also in height, um, this is uh, interesting because look at the two different methods to collect the same kind of data. Okay. One survey, one method of a survey uh, would require you to uh, um, have people go around the country and ask uh, uh, um, teen teenagers and adults step on a scale and have the height measured and so on. And that would probably cost you tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands uh, of dollars to perform. And the other way, just um, write a, a small script to uh, extract the data, send it to the grid, wait 10 minutes for, an ex for the result and get the same answer. This is something you could probably do uh, every week or so, as opposed to the um, uh, physical method. <coughs> now, in addition, there's another surprise here. Okay, this is a cartoon from uh, 20 years ago, um, and one dog says to the other, "If you can't read it, I'll read that to, to you." On the internet, nobody knows your dog. And th this was published in 1993. Not everybody here uh, might be aware that there was an internet back then, but it actually did exist. And even then, people said, look, you're hiding behind a keyboard and a screen, and no one sees you. So you can make up whatever lie you want on yourself, and you won't be caught. And because of that, when you meet people online, you should, be, you should assume that they're uh, lying, they're not telling the truth about themselves. And this is not just a, 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 a an assumption that some cartoonist uh, made, and is not true anymore. It actually has been uh, researched and, and found to be Correct. Here's an example from a uh, dating site where people looked at the height people report on their profile card, um, in particular males, the US males, and on average they report themselves to be uh, five centimeters taller than the average. It is statistically speaking uh, impossible. That's what turned out to be a much richer age. <laughs> now, why is this happening? Let's think, and think about the incentive, okay? We have uh, the right numbers and uh, um, uh, young answers and the wrong numbers on a dating site. What is the incentive on a dating site? You want to get more dates, therefore you want to appear more attractive. And in the US right now, uh, that means you need to be taller and uh, richer. So you, um, there's something happening here there, I, mean, I don't want to say lying, but there's some psychological process or other cognitive process that um, for some reason skews the average up. And on um, CQA, that is the other answers, what is the incentive? Well, you want to know the answer. You have an information need that you want to answer. And you want to know, you want other people to comment on your appearance 
And if you want them to uh, comment on your appearance and on your model measurements and on someone else's, then your incentive is to supply the right details. Or else there's the, the answer is no. So that's one point. And now, assuming that um, you do have this incentive to report correctly, weight um, could be a sensitive issue, depending on the person, but, on the person, but in general, this is not something that uh, people freely uh, are disclosed to uh, their surroundings. So the other important aspect is anonymity. By giving the users the option to make up a nickname that's not connected to their real life persona, they can control the level of exposure. And when they control, can control the level of exposure, the, um, uh, they feel more free to uh, re reveal secrets that they might not just secrets, but uh, pieces of information that would not make sense, for example, on the uh, Facebook wall. And we actually uh, published a paper that uh, um, looks at that issue uh, uh, more So if you look at media where you have anonymity and you have an incentive to uh, tell the truth, then you can uh, extract uh, um, data which is uh, of high quality. And that happens also on search logs on uh, share, photo sharing sites like Flickr, um, but not on uh, Facebook, or not on the photo sharing feature of Facebook where you have your uh, real life persona type of user. And the same is for uh, email and IM where your identity is uh, um, verified. Think of two secret ways that you can match with a regular expression and, and solve automatically and see if the answer they receive is correct or not. Then more difficult questions are uh, about the interpretation of the law of, uh, about the age of consent. It varies by US state and the interpretations, but it's also something you can uh, fairly easily determine the answer to. And then there, are, there is a slightly harder category of body measurements. You see someone pose the question saying, I weigh 200 kilograms, am I fat? and uh, people give uh, both types of answers. Now, it, the, the, the level of accuracy in, in answers really varies by the difficulty of the question, which is understood, but in general, they do get the correct answer. So, um, the uh, game here is fairly balanced. The askers would uh, supply the uh, truthful uh, details, and in exchange, they get truthful answers. Let's switch back to the uh, askers now and show you another example of uh, data that would be probably very hard to collect on um, real life. So this is uh, first time sex. We have plenty of question asking about questions about first time sex. Uh, in, this, in this example, more than 60,000 of those. Well, look, we looked at the age of the asker, plotted the CDF, and the ground truth here is the Kinsey Institute uh, data in the US. And again, you see a very good match. Now think about the anonymity issue, about trying to collect this uh, type of data face-to-face um, -face from a teenager and having to train the interviewer and so on. And again, the issue of uh, um, how costly it is to collect this in real life and how simple it's being made by uh, connecting this online uh, really, is, um, really brings up the uh, uh, benefit of um, data mining. Okay. Let's do the same, but try and um, move along the time axis. As I said, the site, the site exists for many years, and we see people ask different questions on the site as they go through different uh, life stages. And they post questions to different categories, and these categories change as the, uh, um, as the um, life changes. This example, we looked at um, uh, pregnant women. Well, we don't know if they're pregnant or not. We do know that they posted the question to the uh, uh, category called pregnancy. And that category usually has, uh, or typically has questions like, I'm two months pregnant and I have these uh, pains or I have these worries, or what should I name the baby and so on. And we can um, look at the full history of those users, anonymized, and on the aggregate, see what other categories they post to, before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and after expected age. And this chart here is it's very hard to read um, on the projector, I know, but 
uh, what it shows is the uh, level of surprise, basically the, the level of activity per category as compared to a baseline. So what categories are more frequent among, among those women um, as compared to a baseline? And some of the categories are, are totally uh, uh, expected. For example, pregnancy, right? this is the premise. Uh, newborn and baby, parenting, toddler, and so on and so forth. Some um, make make sense, but maybe you would have guessed them uh, in advance. So trying to conceive, which is a category in our answers, is, is very uh, popular just uh, up to two weeks before uh, getting pregnant. Also, uh, adoption. So adoption is something people discuss, uh, people discuss uh, either before getting pregnant or afterwards. Now, you could think about uh, reasons to do that uh, in both cases, but to actually determine the reasons, you'd have to look at the text, and this is something we uh, have not yet done. But if someone here is uh, interested or, or knows someone in social sciences that wants to collaborate, then I'd be happy to uh, uh, work with them. We also have a category, um, increased interest in marriage and divorce. So marriage and divorce in our answers, for, for some reason, is a single category. And I don't know which one is which, but there's an interest in marriage and divorce before getting pregnant and um, after six months after that. And again, to, to see the, the reasons and to, to draw some uh, uh, social conclusions, we we'll take a photo of which we have not done. Finally, um, something that's not expected, an increased interest in soap operas when the baby is six months old. So people may have told you that having kids would uh, forever change your life, but uh, now you have a very good with that. You see more so for this. Okay, this is pretty much the um, same analysis, but now we're trying to estimate the uh, uh, mean or median time between switching from one category to the next. Okay, we watch a user post to pregnancy, then uh, they post to a newborn and baby category with a time difference of eight months. Okay, eight is the correct number here, but it's not nine because it takes them time to realize that they're pregnant. And we actually did uh, plot the um, graph of uh, amount of questions uh, per uh, time uh, per term. There are uh, several interesting path, uh, paths here. Let's uh, look at singles and dating, uh, which leads uh, to 18 months of pregnancy. Then I saw the baby. <laughs> Fifteen months later, the toddler peace for uh, It might also lead within 18 months to trying to conceive. And if you're unlucky in 15 months to sexually transmit the disease. <laughs> okay. It's, it's not a decision. <laughs> Good. Um, so we, we showed this as a way. Um, as a cheap way to conduct surveys in uh, science, social sciences and public health, we've published a um, line of papers on stuff like uh, information needs of uh, people who are diagnosed with cancer, side effects of drugs, overweight, bullying, and uh, so on. We show that anonymity helps, not just in this stuff. We have, uh, as I said, uh, papers you can uh, uh, dig online. We show that uh, in more detail. And we also know that not speaking face to face, that it has in, having some kind of electronic medium helps with revealing uh, uh, sensitive details. But this is not a, a silver bullet. For example, there's a gen gender difference. We may count uh, the occurrence, uh, occurrences of Kendall, my boyfriend, versus Kendall, my girlfriend, and you see that Kendall, my boyfriend, is much more frequent for uh, different reasons, right? There's a, uh, gender psychology issue that probably mediates the uh, expression of that need. Now, if you were to uh, uh, take these counts and, for example, try to estimate the uh, makeup of the population from them, you'll get the numbers awfully wrong. So you, we need to really understand what uh, what are the biases before we jump to conclusions for this kind of thing. So that means he's done very well. Okay, final uh, slide. Of course, I how high for the tiring, uh, there's a URL, or just catch me in the break, and here's my email. Thanks.
Thank you very much. I have two <laughs> questions. Um, one is, uh, have you investigated whether perhaps um, some of the um, users who are asking certain questions might be biased towards people who are more concerned about something? So for instance, um, uh, perhaps short adolescent boys ask, am I short or more frequently than, um, than the average distribution? Uh, and secondly, uh, in the example you gave on uh, searches for, or, or comments on adoption uh, before and after pregnancy, um, you mentioned that uh, it was a popular thing both before and after. Um, and my question is, is that uh, for the same set of users? For example, um, a 40-year-old professional woman who's trying to conceive might be talking about adoption because she's interested in that if things aren't going well in the conception department versus a 15-year-old who accidentally got pregnant and is considering giving up a baby for adoption post-pregnancy. Um, so I was wondering if you sort of separated out uh, different groups in that way or whether it was all aggregated. Okay, for um, overly, um, okay, mind the first question, okay. Uh, bias in, in user interest in asking things okay. compared to the general population. Okay. So we've done this for uh, overweight issues, so mm -hmm. generally weight issues, where we uh, looked at the um, percentage of obese people per county and ma uh, matched to the zip code of the <coughs> and that's a fully detailed analysis, which is currently under review, but I could probably give you a, a, a copy. And with regard to uh, pregnancy and unplanned pregnancies are, are very frequent on our answers actually because the um, um, segment of uh, female teenagers is, is uh, fairly active on the site and also we have the anonymity uh, issue going for it. Uh, we have not yet done this, that piece of, piece of research, but as I said, we have to collaborate. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is, I know you're all very Yeah, yeah. Okay, the question was, um, are there any um, characteristics of obese people in terms of activity on your answers? Well, I think the question about, was about uh, any other kind of online activity. On your answers, yes, we have done this. And we know which categories they are uh, active in. And regarding other properties, um, no, I don't think we have. Okay, but we do have this data because we have so many properties like photo sharing, and, Bookmarking and news reading and email and message. Maybe you didn't describe other habits or other. Yeah. Yes. And people have done uh, uh, lots of interesting stuff from uh, similar signals like uh, Twitter data used for um, um, public health issues and uh, you know symptoms of uh, smokers and so on. If you remember, uh, we that piece of research. Um. Is, is the, the young answer data set available for research? Yes, uh, in, in general, the API is open. There are no uh, significant uh, uh, gaps on usage. There have been lots of academic papers published, and very few of them were without uh, cooperation. So a lot of the data could be in the, uh, just without uh, cover. Okay. Now let's thank that again. Thank you.